But recent survey suggests that nine out of ten prospective adopters say that the cost of living crisis is affecting their decisions about adoption. According to that survey by Adoption UK, the charity is calling for an urgent review of financial support for adopters and adoptees and for lifelong support for adopted people. I'm delighted to be joined now by Alison uh, Woodhead, who is the Director of uh, Public Affairs uh, for Adoption uh, UK. Good to see you. Uh, your recent research is, is deeply troubling uh, for all of the reasons I set out in that introduction. But may I suggest to you, particularly for the young folk who are there hoping that adoption is the route for them uh, to safety and to happiness. What is the scale of it? Well, there are a couple of thousand children waiting for uh, adoptive homes. And what's particularly worrying about this is that um, the children who wait the longest um, are likely to be worst impacted by the cost of living crisis. So I was talking to somebody the other day who had planned to take a group of siblings, which is which is quite common, groups of siblings needing uh, adoptive homes. But they were having to think again because of the because of the cost increases that they were facing as a family, even without any children. And we know that sibling groups wait uh, on average about 11 months longer to find an adoptive home. And so that's just an, one example of, of the impacts of this, this cost of living crisis. As you say, adopters and adopted people, perhaps not amongst those groups of vulnerable people that you might think of as being impacted by this crisis. Well, what's the current arrangement at the moment? I mean, I know from family experience, my, my sister-in-law did a great deal of fostering, that in the case of fostering, you can get some support from the local authority for the very, very important work that you're doing. But if you become an adopter or an adopting couple, is there, is there any support either from central government or from, uh, from local authorities to help you with that? There is some. I so what, one of the things that we're campaigning for is um, improved uh, adoption leave and pay policies so that everybody, whether you're a self-employed adopter, whether you're an employed adopter, that you get the same benefits as somebody who was going on maternity leave. Because what's incredibly important is these are very vulnerable children who've had a tough start in life and they need a lot of support. You know, somebody was saying to me the other day, their social worker had told them they needed to consider taking at least nine months off work and that's that's wise advice these children need us when they when they first arrive in our families yeah. but but that person we're saying now that that just felt impossible um so and and there there is got there is government support for um for for therapeutic help which families do need as their children are growing up it's called the adoption support fund but families tell us that they're really worried that with the competition for uh, resources at government level that that that's going to slip off the radar. And so we're, sure. we're pushing really hard to make sure it doesn't. And, and presumably there is a cost if, if adoptions can't go forward because folk can't afford it. I mean, what happens to these, the, these little people who are waiting, fingers crossed, for adoption? Uh, there is a cost to the state presumably there if, if they have nowhere to go, uh, let alone a, a lovely, welcoming family. That's right. I mean, it's more expensive to raise a child yeah. in foster care than in, in, in an adoptive family, as far as the state's concerned. But it's, it, you know, more than that, it's the emotional toll mm. that it takes on children not to have a permanent family, because it's very typical for children in care to move to several different placements. My own daughter, I was her fifth family by the time she came to live with me at the age of five. So, you know, obviously that, that takes its toll on top of the trauma that these children face um, in their in their birth families.